Hey everybody and welcome back to another video of 3D modeling and this time we are going to make a sweeper. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's something I wanted to have for quite a long time. It's um, basically a object that is uh, an object that I um, I felt like you see so so often in theme parks and in, in general like everywhere um, because like these these like big areas plazas all this kind of stuff you know the, to clean them by hand is like basically impossible and um, you will need something and these kind of sweepers are basically what they use for it so like, like little armies of sweepers in theme parks I um, I unfortunately haven't found I, I'm I have a photo, it wasn't taken by me, it was taken by my aunt when we were in Disneyland in 1998. It um, is incredible, uh, it's like a photo of a backstage area, um, they they had an, like, a, like a little door open and there were li literally like 25 sweepers in there, it was hilarious, like super hilarious and I wanted to make this for quite a while but I felt not really comfortable enough to build that yet um, because it really was a hassle to bring this thing to a somewhat reasonable amount of vertices and um, vertex in general like uh, the LOD that makes you know the model not too crazy big and still wanted to make it look decent enough um, and also I was so much testing around with the TMT in general um, to see how I can make all the objects I made so far smaller and it appeared that there is not much possibility and unfortunately this is really a little bit of a I don't know how to call it really it's 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 a bit of a struggle because um, I, I really feel like the TMT offers so many possibilities and it's great how to use it and, and all this comes kind of up it, it kind of works all fine but there's this one thing which really is annoying and this is like um, the TMT does compress the files again so what, when I have made my files ready I made all the textures I made the FBX I made like the preview images and stuff I, I create the zip file that I'm going to upload and usually my zip file isn't bigger than somewhat about two megabytes um, which is small which is okay like if the object would be two megabytes in the end that's fine but it appears that after the TMT object is downloaded the PCUGC file is like 28 MBs which is incredible and after testing everything like making the lots even smaller like really starting with the, the second lot at already 20% of the original model only and I tested to make only everything only on one uh, texture I tested everything around to make it only on 512 pixels and all these kind of things and I didn't really find a really good kind of you know perfect compromise because there's either way the model looks decent in terms of vertices and stuff it's okay you know I, I don't want to go over 3k tris in general and this object only has 1.4 thousand tris so it's actually pretty small um, and uh, it, it is it is kind of working but the problem is the if you make the textures for it you really want to make a lot with textures and bump maps but the bump map itself is the most problematic thing in in general because the, the the bump map is way too big the bump map created is like I can boil it down to somewhat like two ish MBs but then what the team T does is it, it kind of recalculates all the things and bakes them again into another uncompromised file format which then is all together bounded in the PCUGC file but it doesn't really matter how small my bump map is, it, uh, the thing seems to recalculate it and it makes it incredibly big. So what I did is actually I tested it and I uploaded this sweeper uh, for once with a 2K texture, with everything in 2K and um, my file size of my zip was 2.3 megabytes. And I uploaded it and downloaded it and it had like 28 MBs. What the fuck? It was like insane. So what I tested is I didn't change anything about the model. I only changed all textures without the um, the the base color, like the normal texture, and reduced it from 2K to 512. And what happened is that the model was only four megabyte big in the end. So it appeared that actually the bump map was the one because I tested just a little bit forth and back the bump map is the one that really makes the difference so what I tested then is I made everything 512 and only 
kept the um, bump map at, or the normal map I should say, at five uh, at 2k. And it appeared it was just lowered by 1 MB, which is 27, still way too big. And now there is the other problem. In game, it looked not that nice. So I am not really happy with how the model looks in the end. I'm happy with my workflow because I got so much better with this model. Like I learned so many, actually I didn't learn them, but I, I could use them the first time. So it is a very, very clean model in the end, um, which is, I have to say, which is something really cool because my, my stroller and my wheelchair, they're nice, but they are kind of, a little bit, they're not faked, but they're a little bit like, I used some little cheats to, to make it look decent. It is not that clean. As you can see, these kind of things, what I'm doing over here, like deleting unnecessary vertices and stuff, I, I really didn't do that much in my uh, first builds. So yeah, it's, it's a bit of a pity. Um, but as you can see, the sweeper model is pretty much done at this point in time. Um, one thing I forgot is I uh, forgot the connection of the um, steering wheel, what I'm going to do later, but it's not in the footage. And also I uh, made a little, um, how's that even called, a security light at the back of the sweeper, which I'm also going to put in later on as well. As you can see, this I moved this um, wheel a little bit inwards. It is not really connected to the model, I'm fully honest with you, but I can't really see that in the game. And it saves up some vertices, so I just hit it. Um, within the sweeper in general and uh, yeah um, now I was just making some size adjustments because I forgot to preset the units and stuff so yeah uh, quite a few things I needed to change here and there but I'm, I'm I got so much more used to the overall modeling and stuff um, one funny thing here was I, I completely forgot that it you know should have a m material and I was like doing some weird stuff here and this is where I jumped into something I was really oh god I, I hated it but it I I got better at it and we are now back to uh, UV unwrapping and I kept this in the video this time to see how I made this because I, I kept everything in one model um, and just was making vertices groups to make sure that I be able to move them around and since I used the uh, mirror modifier you can see that I just deleted all the center the faces that you will have in the middle because the uh, even though I had clipping activated it creates these kind of edges and faces in the middle you don't want to have because they they kind of create a little weird uh, element with the UV unwrap and yeah so I was doing the UV unwrapping and as you can see it's uh, everything about one uh, is going on one thing and so I started with this one piece over here which is kind of the centerpiece which is also flexi color um, later on in the model and I'm, I'm, I was just starting to to find some edges to use and as I said I'm I'm quite happy with the unwrap at the end like um, I had some issues at the beginning because I really wasn't understanding exactly how it works. The, I think that my biggest advantage is that I do have kind of a little bit um, of a good 3D vision. I, I can really imagine how things would um, kind of unfold and stuff. So I do understand this, but I way too often forget some edges and stuff. But as you can see, I, I just made this rather quickly and um, just pinned it. Um, so. This is a kind of a workflow I got used to myself now. Um, Crapzone showed it to me and I really adapted it and I think it's, it's a good way. I just throw it in um, and then just uh, when you're happy with one part of the UV, just throw it just next to it and you can later on reposition it yourself. I just pinned it um, in the uh, working area of the UV map and then you, you can see this pretty much with the um, seat now as well. I, I just did the same here and now with the pedals, um, they were pretty much um, a disaster. I, I didn't know what I exactly did wrong here, but it was a disaster. For whatever reasons, I, I kind of... Uh, I messed up some things and until I was getting the UV map correctly nicely done I, I was like it was a nightmare I didn't really know what I did wrong here um, so I I kind of was a bit I, I was a bit uh, kind of confused but in the end as you can see it's it's perfectly aligned or on top of the screen on the left hand side um, I got it done eventually which is, um, yeah, I don't know what it was. I think I forgot a face somewhere in the middle and this was causing these troubles and yeah. Um, but the overall workflow, as you can see, is pretty much going to unwrap everything. And I keep it in the video because I, I figured that a lot of you guys um, were starting to model as well and you were actually watching these videos. And here's a little announcement I can make, hopefully. Um, 
when now the Christmas days are gone and we have some free time between the years, so to say, um, I will hopefully sit down together with Crapstone and we're going to record a little tutorial series of making a model for the TMT. I think, uh, you know, Blender tutorial in general would be maybe a little bit too much, but we're going to make like a basic Blender tutorial and then how the workflow is to get things in. People have been asking for a tutorial um, all the time and I have to say it, it would be not the right way if I would do it because I'm not I'm still not good enough so I can I can mainly try to to make the commentary and make kind of the explanation of how it works but I definitely will need Krebsone in the video to make sure that he is also giving you guys the infos that you will need um, and he's way better in explaining and uh, he can also control that I'm not going to do some weird stuff which you do not know and do not need in the end and I hope that this will work out and yeah eventually as you can see I, I finished the UV map and it, it's looking rather clean which I am super happy about um, you can definitely there is like a um, there is like a little um, shortcut to position the things as you can see automatically um, the problem with that is it it kind of creates it not like it, it tries to use the maximum space of the UV grid, which is amazing, but the problem is that it doesn't really um, distinguish between which elements you want to have bigger or which ones you have to want well, smaller. And I definitely wanted to have these things, as you can see, these main parts, which are the biggest ones, the biggest, since they need the most detail. And so that's why I, I kind of hide all these small things you don't really need that much detail in um, just in the corner and then I tried to make this as big as possible so even though I'm going to lose some space on the left hand side I made sure that these main elements are as big as they need to be so that in the end I um, I can really put the most detail on these ones because that's what you see in the game you don't see you don't see the inner part of the rims and you don't see really exactly what's going on with the uh, axis you don't really see what's going on uh, in the inner part of the little brush you don't really see what's on the back side or the downside of the seat so these kind of things you can really make really small on the view grid but like the front bumper and the front in general you really do need that as I can see I made this little security light here really quick um, that's something I, I it's also a mess uh, immersive <laughs> immersive I should say um, so it, it does have a little bit of a glow in the game which also works and I'm pretty happy because that's the first um, thing I really did completely on my own um, crap zone just helped me a tiny bit um, with uh, a little bit of the bump map where I did a little a very tiny mistake I didn't know that simply um, but yeah, as you can see, um, this is now the workflow which uh, Krebsone taught me, and I, I, I would, I must say, uh, that was just a little German in here. I must say that this workflow is incredible. I didn't know about that at all beforehand, um, and this is creating the perfect bump map for your model, and this works basically very simple. You're gonna copy your low poly model onto a new layer and then you make the low poly model completely high poly. As you can see I'm going to go completely crazy here on on details. Um, you can even add some details. You can make some, I don't know, I made some cooling grills, some vents on top of it. I, made, I put some scratches in, all these kind of stuff. Um, because in the end you can then bake the um, high poly model and just completely bring that uh, into the low poly model and it will create a bump map for the low poly model because they share the same UV grid but they the engine understands that you take basically the depth information and the kind of roundish normal information so to say from the high poly model and it puts it on top of the um, on top of the UV grid of the low poly model in terms of making kind of a normal map out of it which then helps to make it appear way more smooth and way more um, good looking than it would be without just having a normal thing so that's why I am doing this as you can see I'm also making some um, front uh, lights here so that you can really um, later on see like a little light popping out and this is only done via a texture later on like via the uh, bump map so this is basically a very nice workflow because you don't really need that um, as a geometry in it's, it's such a subtle detail um, it's quickly done but you you just would need that in your um, What's that called again? Uh, in your bump map and not in the model itself. So what I'm creating here is just a little um, depth information, I should call it. And um, I'm going to 
put this just pretty much easily in here and yeah that's it so that's being created then a little front light and later on you can really see that in the model as a part of the bump map um, that's as easy as it is and I can do this pretty much everywhere and yeah I think that's already it for the episode. Um, I'm gonna put some uh, final renders at the end of the video as always and then I'm going to um, give the link to the workshop element also down below in the description so you can grab it. And I hope you enjoyed this little episode of making this little cute sweeper and I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, have a great day and bye bye.